everybody? Is the music off? <laughs> can you see me? Can you give me hearts if you can see me? Oh, I'm on, yay. I can see myself. Let me Hello, make- Hello, everybody. Yay. I always worry when my husband isn't here <laughs> that I'm gonna mess up the tech because I mess up tech quite a lot. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our remote viewing. Eleganza, extravaganza. Tonight, what we're gonna be doing is flexing those psychic muscles. Do I, do I have to take my jacket off and show you the guns? No, but we're gonna be flexing our psychic muscles and we're gonna be doing this by practicing something called remote viewing. Now, remote viewing for our purposes is simply trying to connect using our inner abilities, and this can be clairvoyance, and remote viewing is typically associated with clairvoyance, but it can also be the other clairs as well. We want to be paying attention to how we are receiving spirit messages, because it's going to be different for each and every person, because we're all different. And so during this exercise, or during this fun time, because it's going to be fun, what I want you to be doing is just keeping your awareness connected to what we are doing and allowing whatever comes through to come through in the way that it does. Now, before we begin tonight, I want to explain just a few guidelines for you because they're important. Let me pull them up. First and foremost, it would be awesome if you could have a notepad or a couple of pieces of paper and a pen because you are going to be writing things down. So if you don't have that, while I take a sip of this water in my Trenta cup, go get a pen and some paper. It's important that we write things down. Anything that comes through, we're gonna be writing it down. Now, once you have your pen and your paper, I want you to create seven, is it seven? I think it's eight actually. I want you to create, yep, yeah, it's eight. Eight different categories. Envelope one, envelope two, all the way to envelope eight. And make sure you have enough space in each category to put in some notes or jot down some thoughts. You wanna be able to like write some things down while we're actually connecting with each envelope. So there's eight envelopes and you are going to need eight different categories. Now, what I want you to do is as we are moving through the envelopes and I'm asking you to connect with them, I'm gonna want you to hold anything that's coming through in terms of your comments. So you don't have to write in the comment section, oh, I'm getting this on uh, envelope one or I'm getting this on envelope four, just hold it because after we run through all of the envelopes, we are going to have the reveal. And we'll say, it is now time for envelope number one, reveal. And when I say that, you can write all of your notes here in the comments section. You can do it in one comment or you can break it up into a few different comments, but only put notes, only, only attach comments to the appropriate envelope, just because it makes it a lot easier to stay organized. And if you wanna go back and look through what you actually revealed or what you actually wrote down after we reveal it, then you can kind of see, oh yeah, I got that or I got this. And so just, we're trying to be organized with it. Don't write down any comments or any notes until we say it's time to reveal. Next, it's really important when we do this kind of an exercise that we come at it in a, a state of neutrality. Neutrality is also a state of receptivity. When we're really activated and we want to get answers, that has kind of a hard energy. But when we kind of let down and have a sense of ease and have a sense of play and flow and kind of a softness about our energy, it's much easier for spirit and for our guides to input little bits of information and for us to notice them because we're not chasing things, we're not reacting to things. So during this entire exercise, make sure you have that energetic disposition of neutrality. That is kind of just an easier way to say it would be, it's, it's kind of like a little bit of an altered state or a state of trance. And when you're in that altered state, really relaxed, super neutral, that's when we get those spirit messages. 
Next, I want to make sure that everybody pays attention to everything that comes in. As I said the other night, doubt, doubt is the enemy of intuition. As soon as something comes in, if we're talking ourselves out of it, or if we are giving all these reasons why it can't be true, well, then we're doubting it. And each time we doubt something that spirit gives to us, it makes it less likely that we'll receive the next message or that they are going to be giving us messages as strongly as they are now. And because we're all here with the same intention, we all want to do this exercise. We all want to connect with spirit. Make no mistake. Spirit is also here with us. And it is the desire of your divine emissaries. These would be your angels and your guide. And of course, your guides and of course, your divine nature that you would be more deeply connected to the source of all things and more deeply connected to your divine nature. And one of the aspects that comes to the fore when you are spiritually connected is your intuitive faculties. So your emissaries, your divine nature really wants to help you connect in this way so that you can have a deeper relationship with source. So whatever you get, no matter how small or how seemingly insignificant, pay attention to it and write it down no matter what. Also pay attention to how it's coming in. We all have different receivers. Some of us are more clairvoyant, which means we can see into the world of spirit with our third eye and sometimes with our open eyes. Others have clear audience, which is where we can actually hear words in our head being spoken, or we can hear externally messages from spirit. Still others, a lot of us actually, are clairsentient, and that's when we have a, an, an ability to feel in our physical body messages from spirit. And this can come up in the form of emotions, but it can also be physical sensations in the body. Um, and then, of course, claircognizance, which is just that sudden knowing you're given a download. And one moment you didn't have the information, and the very next moment you said, aha, I know what this is. And you've got all the information. That's claircognizance. And there's other different ways that spirit can reach out to you. And again, it's all individual. It's based on you. But pay attention because if you familiarize yourself with how spirit's speaking to you, you'll notice the next time spirit's trying to get your attention in this same way. So if you're noticing images because you're clairvoyant, the next time as you're moving through your day, tomorrow, next week, next month, and you start seeing similar images, you can stop and say, aha, that was like the time I was receiving spirit messages. So maybe spirit is giving me messages again. Being familiar with how it works for you allows you to strengthen those psychic muscles. Now for the actual exercise. Let me explain how it is going to work. We have tonight eight envelopes. In four of these envelopes, we have people of note. And when I say note, I mean you will recognize who these people are when we reveal them. These are important people who occupy, each and every one occupies specific characteristics, specific energies, and had very exciting and important lives. We've got a diverse array of people. So, I want you to think outside of the box. I don't want you to just peg yourself as, oh, I'm looking for this kind of person in this exercise. We've got, we've got different people here, but you will know who they are. And the other three envelopes that we have are actually places, places, locations. These two are very well known. I think most of us will know all three, but maybe one of them, some of us might not know, but just try and hook into what's coming through when we're looking at each envelope, whether it's a person or people or whether it's a place. And remember, everything counts, especially with places, right? With places, you might get colors, you might get trees, you might get stone, you might get buildings, you might get all kinds of things, paintings. And with people, you might get physical attributes and characteristics, but you also might get details about their life and what it is that they did or do and so on and so forth. So there's just so much information attached to each person or place that you are bound to pick up on something. Here again, it's so important. Don't doubt yourself. Just let it flow through you. What I'm going to do one at a time is I'm going to hold up an envelope. I'm going to say, what do you feel about this envelope? 
I'll guide you a little bit gently, asking you to kind of plumb the depths of what's coming through from spirit and help you to expand your awareness. And remember, write it all down and, and be organized about it for the reveal. We'll go through all eight envelopes, probably just once, unless I feel we might need to do it again. We've, we've got a lot, so I don't want to take up too much time. So, are you ready? Four people, well, four envelopes about people, a person or people, and three envelopes about places. If you could show me some hearts, if you're ready to go, I'm ready to go. For all of you who are gonna participate, let's start by just taking a few deep breaths. We like to inhale through the nose at least five seconds. And then exhale through the mouth at least five seconds. Continue to inhale through the nose, five seconds. And exhale through the mouth, five seconds. This is getting you into that relaxed, slightly altered state of being. In through the nose, five seconds. And out through the mouth, five seconds. Do you know why it's important to breathe this way? It's because your body only ever breathes that way when it feels safe, when it feels protected. I'm at home, I'm safe, I can relax, I can let down. And again, when we let down these walls, that's when we can more clearly hear the messages of spirit. So anytime you're about to go into an intuitive technique or practice or exercise, always make sure you regulate your breathing you really breathe deeply in and out a few times so that you can get into that relaxed state. One more sip of water. <clears throat> and we are ready to go. First envelope is <clears throat> a person. Now I am going to be sending to you through my consciousness an image of this person. And I invite you to connect with the image in the envelope as well as the image that I'm sending you with my consciousness. What we want to do here is try to pick up on things like colors, male, female, attributes, personality, life history or lore, maybe numbers come through. Possibly symbols as well might come through. For envelope number one, writing everything down, <clears throat> keeping it in an organized fashion. Are you feeling anything in your physical body? What is that feeling? Write it down. Are you hearing anything? within your thoughts or even outside, like a, a ringing or a tone. If you're hearing anything, write it down. And if you close your eyes, what do you see with your mind's eye? What information is being given to you regarding envelope number one? All right, setting that down. Let's take a deep breath in and out just to clear that. <clears throat> I'm clearing the chamber of my imaginal mind. Sorry, <clears throat> my voice is failing, sorry. <clears throat> sorry about that, guys. I've been running around all day, it's crazy. 
but I'm going to clear my the chamber of my imaginal mind, which is where I send the pictures and information from. And now let's move on to envelope number two. This is a place. What just popped into your mind? What just popped into your mind with this envelope? I'm sending you through my consciousness an image and some words and some information about what's contained in envelope number two. Any colors, any names, any letters? Maybe you feel something. What is that feeling? Is it a high vibration feeling? Does it make you feel joyful or is it a somber feeling? What are you feeling in your body and where? Paying attention to how the information is coming through. for envelope number two. What was the first thing that popped into your mind? You know, often it's the first thing that's the accurate thing. So always make a note of what you first received and write it down. Even after you start getting additional things and maybe they don't make much sense, it doesn't matter. What you first received is quite important. Envelope number two. Deep breath in, exhale out of the mouth, clearing the chamber of the imaginal mind so I can send you another transmission for envelope number three, which is a person. Envelope number three. What kind of person is this? What kind of characteristics can you pull down? Maybe you see a film strip in your mind. You see a story playing out. Well, what does that story look like? What are the details of that story? Can you get a name or letters in a name. This is going to be a picture of a person. Where do you think the person is when this picture or this portrait, this picture was taken or what do you think the portrait depicts this person as doing? Where are they? What are the surroundings like? Are any odd references coming to you? And you wonder, why am I thinking that? That's strange. Make a note of that. Write it down as I send you through my consciousness an image of this person and also accompanying feelings that I have about this person. Writing everything down. This is envelope number three, a person. Take a deep breath in and exhale through the mouth. Letting everything clear away as we move now into envelope number four. Here again, we have a place. A place. What kind of place do you think this is? Where in the world do you think this is? 
Maybe you can get a country or you can get a state, a continent. Are there any structures or buildings in this place? Do you think this is a new place or maybe it's an old place? What kind of energy do you feel around this place? Any ideas what might have happened on the land of this place? What are you feeling? For envelope number four, place. What's coming through for you? All right. Deep breath in through the nose, five seconds. And exhale through the mouth, five seconds. As we move now to envelope number five, person. We're looking for names. colors, what's depicted, is this a male, is this a female, do you feel good energy, high vibration energy? Or is there some other type of energy coming up for you as you think about envelope number five, person? I'm sending you through my own consciousness an image of this person and some details of this person's story. Keeping in mind again that all the people and places are well known, nothing obscure. Is this person holding anything? What's this person doing? What happened to this person in his or her life? Any details about that? How about some dates? When was this person alive? Is this person alive? Or is this person deceased? Anything and everything that comes in for envelope number five, person. Trust your gut here. Spirits giving you information. Can you feel it? Where is it coming in? I can feel it. I'm connected to all of you. I can feel it. Deep breath in through the nose five seconds. And then exhale out of the mouth five seconds. Back to neutrality. Back to receptivity. Now we have envelope number six, which is a place. This is a place and I'm sending you now through our linked consciousnesses a picture of this place. What are you getting? I'm sending it strongly to you. I can't wait to see what you guys get. We had so many hits the other night. It was really cool. What are you getting? What colors? Where is this place? What happened at this place? 
Is this a new place? Is this an old place? Any images flashing up? Any sounds? Any words? Envelope number six, place. Spirit is giving this to you. Whatever you can get, write it down. Write it, write it down. Deep breath in through the nose and exhale through the mouth back to neutrality, back to life, <laughs> back to neutrality, back to the center, yes. As we move on to envelope number seven, person. Ooh, feel that energy? Who's this person, do you think? All of the people are going to be recognizable to you. Male, female, both. Where are they from? Can you get a location for him or her? With this envelope, I will give you a hint. There's more than one person and their story is fantastical. May seem a little wild as it's coming in. This would be one of those envelopes where you might second guess some of the things coming in because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Stay with it. This is a fantastical story. Can you get anything on who these people might be? How about what they look like? How about their ages? Or can you tell if they're alive? Or are they deceased? When did they live? When were they alive? And if they are deceased, when do you think they passed? Any names? Letters, numbers, symbols, patterns, information. How's that information coming in, especially on this one? How's it coming in? Notice where your senses are lighting up. Notice how they're activating for envelope number seven person well i just told you people two people deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth letting the energy of that envelope fall away as we enter into the final envelope it's the count. I'm whispering. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to keep it super meditative for everybody. Let's go into envelope number eight. Envelope number eight. This too is a person, a single person, not like not married, but just like one person. I am sending you through my consciousness an image of this person and this person's name. And since I'm sending you the name, I want you to look for letters, look for names, look for words. Listen to your inner voice and what it might be saying about this person. Don't forget colors and how this person might be depicted, what's happening in the picture. 
Is this person alive or deceased? When was this person alive or is this person still alive? How about attributes? I want you to name some attributes, some descriptors of this person. Spirit, let's give everybody a few words describing this person now. Write them down. Trusting yourself. How does spirit describe this person? I'm also sending you through the consciousness an image now of this person, not just the name, but an image, a specific image that I invite you to hook into. Everything that comes through, write it down. Envelope number eight, person. Person. Deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have you reveal all of the information you got for each envelope in order. Let me get into the feed right now so that I don't know if Tina Garino's in there taking care of things, taking care of business. I don't know if she is, but if, would, if someone would write, now what we're going to do is if someone would write picture number one, picture number one, reveal, and then when I say picture number two, someone can write picture number two, reveal, so that we go in order. I'll give you some time to answer, to write everything down that you got, all of the information that was given to you by spirit or that you picked up intuitively. We'll give you like a, a little bit of time to get your comments in without telling you yet who these people are or where these places are because I want you to trust your gut. This is an exercise in trusting the messaging from spirit. So no matter how vague, no matter how odd, if you received anything as we go through the reveal, write that in the comments, starting with picture, excuse me, envelope number one, person. Please comment and write everything that you got on this person in envelope number one. This is envelope number one, reveal. If somebody could write envelope number one, reveal. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Mahalo. All right, everybody, I'm waiting to see what you got on the person in envelope number one. Spence Marsing says, I'm scared to reveal in case I'm wrong. Come on, Spence, it's okay. Don't worry. This is the this is the crux of this exercise is to trust yourself because sometimes psychics and intuitives and spiritual people do get it wrong. But if we don't trust that there's a connection and that we're giving what we're getting, then we kind of stay in that stuck, doubtful place. And so just move past that. There's going to be a lot of people commenting all kinds of things. So nobody's going to notice what, what you are saying precisely. Just trust it and give it for envelope number one reveal. This can be description of what they look like. This can be attributes describing their personality and also what they did with their life or what they're known for or any mythology and lore that might be surrounding this person or storytelling surrounding this person. It can be numbers, it can be a name, anything. So everything that you got for envelope number one I'm watching the comments as they come on through. <clears throat> 
And I want you guys to know that because we had all these envelopes together because I worked on this together. It's going to happen where you guys are going to pick up on a different envelope while connecting to a different, another envelope. So if we're looking at envelope number one, it's possible that you might be getting information on envelope number eight. It's totally possible. So you may be getting names and characteristics for a different person, but assigning it to picture number one, that's, or envelope number one, that's gonna be really, really common. So don't worry about it, just put it all there. Awesome. Hi, Christy, welcome. Write down everything you got for envelope number one, a person. We're getting some hits here. Hits, 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 hits. What does the energy of this person feel like to you? Comment, comment. What is the energy? Like when we hook into this person's energy, how does that feel to you? What does it make you think of that's important with this person? All right, we are moving on now. And if someone will put in the comment comments, envelope number two, Reveal. This is you revealing everything that you wrote down for envelope number two, which is a place. What did you get for envelope number two? If someone could put in the comments, envelope number two, reveal. I would appreciate it. What did you write down for envelope number two? And as I hold it up to you now, are you getting anything additionally? That counts. Number two, reveal. Everybody reveal what they got. Awesome, keep it coming guys. Envelope number two. Where do you think on the planet this place is? What country do you think this place is in? Lots of hits, guys, lots of hits. I wanna watch the feed. <laughs> Revealing your answers for envelope number two. All right. Let's move on now to envelope number three, reveal, where you reveal everything. They're my wet little handprints. Everything you got on the person in envelope number three. If someone can type envelope number three, reveal. It is now time to give everything that you got for envelope number three. Who is this person? Thank you, Katrina McDonald. Who is this person? Attributes, names, age, timelines, dates. What did they do with their life? What kind of story do you see when you hook into this person? Any symbols, any numbers? Where did this person live? Or where does this person live? Oh, one of you guys just gave an answer that kind of blew my mind a little. <laughs> Number three person, number three person. Male, female. Number three, 
Interesting answers, interesting answers. In envelope number three, what are you getting from this? And when we connect with this person's energy, like what do we feel? What do we feel inside of ourselves? Do we feel activated? Do we feel connected? Do we feel excited? Do we feel somber? Reveal your answers for envelope number three. All right. Moving on now to envelope number four reveal which is another place envelope number four reveal if someone will put that in the comments what did you get on this place what do you sense about this place what did you write down i'd like you guys to try and guess well not guess try and hook into where this is on the planet any attributes of this place is it indoors is it outdoors what do people do at this place, if anything. I hear a doggy. Who that? Is it sunshine? Do you want to come say hi to everybody? Oh my God, come on. Hi, sweetie. Hi. Are you wondering where mommy is? Well, mommy's playing games on the internet with people. Yeah, she is. Oh my God. <laughs> Missy Sunshine, oh my god, she's so pretty. She can't help it, she's so pretty. We are on envelope number four, place. Good girl, good girl. You wanna sit down? Number four, you wanna stay with mommy? It's not that comfortable right there, your bed's in the other room. Are there any structures on this place? Is it a vista? Did something happen on, at this place or on this place? Number four. Awesome answers, guys. All right. Moving on now. Two, envelope number five reveal. Envelope number five reveal. Somebody put that in the comments, mahalo. Envelope number five, this is a person, if you might recall. This is a person. Please comment with everything that you got for the person in envelope number five. Thank you, Dean Bergeron. Is it Deanne? Sorry, Deanne. Or Deanie? Whatever, thank you. All right, what colors do you think are in this particular picture? What's depicted? Any names? Any dates? Oh, what are you doing? Oh, Lord. Symbols? Any symbols come through with this person? Now, when you connect with this person, like, what did you feel? This person has quite a story. What did you feel? Revealing all of the information that you got for number five. Hi, Chandra. We're doing some remote viewing exercises. Write everything that you got for envelope number five. Interesting answers, guys. Lots of hits, and, and some of them are like roundabout hits where you're getting the information, and you, I can tell that you're filtering it through like you're, you're knowing, but the way it's coming out, it's, it's still very accurate. <laughs> Envelope number five, this is a person. What did you get for number five? Names, ages, symbols, colors. What's happening in that? picture. Moving on now to envelope number six reveal and this is our final place. Our final place that we, we were asked to connect with. 
Again, this is a well-known place, nothing vague, but it's a location. So there's probably a lot of stuff going on in the location. You can probably tell me whether there's greenery there, flowers, whether there's desert, whether there's ocean. You can maybe pick up what happened there, what's still happening there. Maybe names. Where on the planet, where on the planet is this place? We are on number six. Envelope number six, which is a place. Try to connect with the energy of this place and just bring through everything that you get. Loving all the answers, guys. Lots of hits. Lots of hits. Keep it coming. For envelope number six. Placing that down now. We're going to our final two envelopes. First one being envelope number seven. We have a person, but again, I told you there's actually two people in the picture in this envelope with a very interesting story. What did you pick up about these people? Are they male? Are they female? Are they alive? Are they deceased? If, de if deceased, when were they alive? Can you tell anything about where they lived? What happened to them? Did something happen to these people? Remember I told you this story is pretty fantastical, so some of you might have been getting images or information that didn't make much sense, and some of you might have been feeling some interesting energy with this particular envelope. Wanted you to pay attention to that, because that's telling. So we are on envelope number seven, reveal. Give me everything. Give it. Give it all you got. Give, give, give it all you got. Honey, I know, but I'm, I'm doing something. I can't just pick up and stop. I'm in the middle of it. Let me finish the envelopes and then I'll let you out. Okay, baby girl? Who's mama, baby? Your mama, baby. All right, get on, get. I see the get. Get, get, get. Get, 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 get. Get, 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 get. Get, 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 get on. <laughs> she don't listen to me. Person number seven. People number seven. interesting answers try to pull down everything that you're getting on this envelope number seven interesting who are the people in envelope number seven and What's their story? <clears throat> All right. And now for the final envelope. If someone can type in the comments, envelope eight, reveal. It is time to give me everything that you got for the person in envelope eight. Envelope eight. Envelope number eight reveal. Thank you, Deanne. I appreciate that again. Who is this person? Y'all are making me nuts with your hits. <laughs> you guys are making me crazy. Oh. Number 
Now try to get a sense of this person's character. When you hook into the consciousness of this person, what does that feel like when you encounter that? What does that feel like in your body? Does it feel good? Does it feel strange? Where's that coming in? Make sure you notice. Chandra sees a seahorse. <laughs> it is not a seahorse, <laughs> but you never know. It could make sense. Even the most vague and crazy little details can often tie in. This is envelope number eight, person. Person, person. If you could give me everything that you got, it doesn't, don't be scared. Don't be worried about it. Nobody's judging anybody up in here. We're just connecting with our own innate abilities. And a lot of us are gonna get most of it wrong and some of it right. A few of us will get most of it right and some of it wrong, but we don't judge ourselves. We are understanding that we're doing this so that we can learn how to connect and hear spirit messages. And again, we've got, I don't wanna call it cross-contamination, but these envelopes and the energy of the spirits of these people and places have been commingled. So some of you are a little out of order, but you're getting huge hits, so, which is really interesting. So person number eight, I'm gonna let you guys write everything you have and I'm gonna let my dog out because she wants to go outside. Does she wanna go outside? Oh God, is that what it is? Okay. And then when I come back, we're going to reveal who's in the envelope. Well, you gotta move, honey. I don't wanna hurt you, I don't wanna hurt your little toesies. Come on. Did I take my mic off? I did. Okay, good. Come on. Now, you better you better not go outside just to want to come back inside. You know how I don't like that. Ding dong. Mr. Koo gets the altar spot. Mr. Koo. Mr. Koo. <gasps> Mr. Koa. Come say hi to the internet. No? Okay, never mind. All right. Okay, guys, I am back. Go get in your bed. We should go, boy, get in your bed. Oh. All right, I'm back. It is now time to reveal our envelopes, starting with the first person. Well, before I reveal this, I want to remind you that you cannot get down on yourself if you have some misses. That's not the point of this exercise that the point of this practice is not to be 100% accurate or even 50% accurate. The point is, again, connecting you to how it works for you when spirit is talking to you. Remember on Tuesday, I used the allegory, the metaphor of the rusty pipes in the old house, right? When we turn the pipes, when we turn the faucet on, the pipes kind of crank up and the water starts flowing and it's dirty and it's kind of rusty, there's sediment in there, you wouldn't drink that water, you wouldn't bathe in that water. But if you let the water run, 
soon the water will hopefully run clear. Well, spirit messaging is a lot like that in the beginning when we're flexing those muscles, that water's running kind of in an obscured way and we're trying to make sense of what's coming through and spirit's trying to speak in a language that we will recognize. It's a process. It is a communal process. <clears throat> but if we continue to initiate this type of thing, if we can continue to reach out to spirit, the water, the flow, the energy will begin to run clear and you'll start recognizing when it's happening. So do not like get upset if you have misses. Don't forget we've got commingling of energy between different envelopes. I just want everybody to not feel bad if they got anything wrong, although many of you got a lot right. Okay, no more lecturing. Let's get on with it. Envelope number one, the reveal. Oh, isn't she pretty? Does anybody know who that is? Comments if you know who that is. And this is one of the reasons I asked you to look for symbols like lotus, coins, elephants, rays. I asked for colors, seeing if you could pick up. Oh my God, it's so high vibration. This is like, I should have this in my room. This is the goddess Lakshmi. Lakshmi. Now Lakshmi symbolizes good luck and also beauty and abundance, by the way. The word Lakshmi is derived from the Sanskrit word Laksya, meaning aim or goal. And in the Hindu faith, she is the goddess of wealth and prosperity of all forms, both material and spiritual. Ooh, I could just eat her up. So colorful. For most Hindu families, Lakshmi is the household goddess and she's a particular favorite of women. Although she's worship, worshipped daily, the festive month of October is Lakshmi's special month. Lakshmi is said to be the daughter of the mother goddess Durga and the wife of Vishnu, whom she accompanied, taking different forms in each of his incarnations. You notice that I took care to say mythology, lore, stories, because now Lakshmi is an ascended master. Laksh Lakshmi is a deity. Did she ever walk on the earth? Well, some people would say no. Does it matter? No, because enough of us have venerated her for centuries upon centuries upon centuries that she now is an energy and she now is an actual deity with specific qualities of energy, which is why I asked what you felt in your body when you connected with this particular envelope. Lakshmi was in envelope no number one. Now let's move to envelope number two, which was a place. It was our first place. This is the one I don't know that all of you will know, but I'm hoping that a lot of you trusted what you were seeing in your mind's eye with, in terms of colors and landscape and things of that nature. This is the Riang Temple in Thailand. A truly stunning temple complex, Wat Bang Riang. Wat in Thai means temple and Bang Riang temple or in Thai Wat Bang Riang is located on the top of Kaolan Mountain. The Bang Riang temple complex certainly will leave a mark in your memory from its wide open stunning vistas to its incredibly detailed statues and tapestries. In fact, this is Buddha, but there's also a, a, a huge one of Kuan Yin. It's just gorgeous. The Actual temple complex consists of three main areas, one where monks keep some of Buddha's cremated remains. In the center of the main temple, there's a giant statue of a sitting Buddha. The last area can be seen off in the distance from the main temple area. It is Kuan Yin, the goddess, surrounded by green tropical forests. So how many of you got green and trees? And how many of you got colors like red and gold? And Kuan Yin, by the way, I believe is in pale, I think it's either white or pale, pale blue robes. So you might've been picking up on a lot of different, a lot of different attributes of this particular place. There's a lot of symbolism here. I think there's like snakes winding up pillars and just really, really beautiful in Thailand, Riang Temple. 
All right. How many of you thought it was a spiritual place? Amy Crandall, I got the woods right. Yeah, I got tall right. Yep, I got the B, but wrong scene. That's okay. All right, we're going to person number three. You ready? How many of you know who this person is? Come on, don't leave me hanging. There's such a delay here, but I want to see how many of you guys know who this person is. Somebody said something about spiritual male Crystal's husband. <laughs> and it's funny because I have had a connection, a deep connection to this person for 25 or 30 years. And he's also a guide to me spiritually, somebody I meditate with. And he's somebody that I venerate. Like I think this guy was the real deal. This is none other than the sleeping prophet named Edgar Casey. Edgar Casey was born in Hopkinsville, Kentucky in the late 1800s. And he was a religious man, very religious, Bible literalist, but he was also extremely psychic. He would sleep with his Bible under his pillow and he wouldn't have to read it, but he'd wake up having memorized great portions of scripture. Now, the first sign that Casey truly was a psychic was when he diagnosed his own ailment. He went to his doctor, his doctor couldn't tell what was going on and Casey told him what the problem was and also how to cure it. Thus, Casey became what we call the father of holistic medicine. He had a huge heart. He never charged for his readings. He gave readings to presidents and celebrities. And I think he passed in the 50s, either the 40s or the 50s. And I saw some of you get that timeline correct as well. He channeled beings. He talked about Atlantis. He talked about coming earth changes in these times. Very accurate and full of integrity. Edgar Casey. There's a lot of stories and details about Mr. Casey. There's a book called There is a River. He has a foundation that's in Virginia Beach, Virginia called the A.R.E. So this is why I'm asking for letters and numbers and, and anything that might come through. Edgar Casey, how you doing, Papa? Oh, I have dreams about Casey. He comes and visits me. All right, moving on. Two, envelope number four. This is a place, remember? Envelope number four. Stonehenge. Stonehenge is an ancient structure. <clears throat> they think about 5,000 years old in Wiltshire, England, was built in phases over time. An incredibly spiritual site built upon ley lines with connections to the equinoxes. Equinoxes? I don't know how you say that. Um, lots of uh, Druid correlations, ancient spirituality. Some of you said outright Stonehenge. I saw it in the comments. It might not have been connected to the correct envelope, but you guys saw it. And so that's a hit. And some of you guys said stone. Some of you guys described the land upon which it sits. Stonehenge is envelope number four. Moving on to number five person. Number five, person. I don't know if I saw anybody get this right on the nose, but I asked you for colors and symbolisms and all kinds of things. Can anybody tell me who that is? We know who that is, don't we? This is Joan of Arc, and I heard, I think some people said young woman, dark hair. Did anybody of you, did any of you pick up any of these colors? We've got orange, we've got blue. We've also got symbolism in the Florida Lee. We've got flags, we've got gold, we've got ribbon, we've got people. Joan of Arc was a peasant girl living in medieval France and she believed that God had chosen her to lead France to victory in its long-running war with England. With no military training 
and as an intuitive channel, because you know she was channeling spirit at the time, Joan convinced the embattled crown Prince Charles of Valois to allow her to lead a French army to the besieged city of Orleans, where it achieved a momentous victory over the English and their French allies, which were the Burgundians. After seeing the prince crowned King Charles the sixth, fifth, sixth, I don't remember. It says King Charles, but I think it was the seventh. I forget. Joan was captured by Anglo-Burgundian forces, tried for witchcraft and heresy, and burned at the stake in 1431 at the age of 19. By the time she was officially canonized in 1920, the Maid of Orleans, as she is now known, had long been considered one of history's greatest saints and an enduring symbol of French unity and nationalism. One of the reasons I chose Joan of Arc is because, first of all, <laughs> It's a bad, it's a bad, I was just going to say bad B, but that was a, she had some bravery, man. Talk about a boss. Talk about somebody who stepped out on faith. Also, she received messages from spirit and what she describes in terms of her process when she gets the message to go into battle, even though they were so defeated in spirit. When what she describes as her process is channeling, she was channeling spirit. Joan of Arc. That's a boss. All right, now we're moving on to the last place. The last place, and I saw this in the comments. I don't know if it was connected correctly, but a lot of you got hits on this one. This is, of course, these are the Pyramids of Giza. Pyramids of Giza, I think I saw some of you say sand and desert. I know I saw somebody flat out say, Pyramids of Giza. Of course, this is a sacred site also built upon ley lines, certainly older than Egypt itself, although Egypt doesn't want us to think so. Edgar Casey has some interesting connections to the Sphinx and to the pyramids because he says there is a great hall of records under what foot of the Sphinx, guys? It's one of the front paws. I forget if it's the right or if it's the left and that it will one day be discovered and the treasure therein rivals what was lost in the fire at Alexandria. So this is a highly spiritual space, pyramids of Giza. How many of you guys saw Giza? Yep, sand, dunes, hills, desert, heat. Yep, Spence Marsing, I got this one. Yes, you did. And Christian, I did get that, absolutely. Kathy, you did, you saw it early, but you saw it. Awesome. Good, good, good. All right. We're down to the last two envelopes. The first being the two people, not one, the two people with a fantastical story. One of you, I think it was, oh, I forget who it was. You got it spot on. I don't know. Maybe you, maybe you know me and you, maybe I've, you've heard me talk about this before, but I was just like, holy crap, you've got it spot on because it's a little bit obscure if you're not in the culture. Boom. This, my friends, is Betty and Barney Hill. I think somebody said biracial couple from like the 40s or 50s, like, hello, Betty and Barney Hill. Why are they important? Well, let me tell you. Among the most influential and widely known UFO incidents is the story of Barney and Betty Hill, a middle-aged New Hampshire couple who, in 1961, were, were returning from vacation. Driving late at night through the White Mountains, the Hills encountered a UFO whose alien occupants reportedly took them on board and subjected them to a thorough medical examination. Several factors seemed to argue strongly in favor of the authenticity of this case. In fact, I think this is one of the most thoroughly vetted UFO cases that there is. The amount of evidence is, um, connected to this case is amazing. First, the narrative of the abduction was not consciously remembered by the Hills, but was extracted by a psychiatrist using hypnosis. This fact seemed to rule out any chance of a deliberate hoax. And they were... They were um, hypnotized or taken through that process separately, but they had coinciding stories. 
Second, one particular piece of information similarly retrieved from Betty Hill's subconscious was something called a star map, which was subsequently deciphered by experts to indicate the alien ship's home solar system. By the way, it doesn't say it in this paragraph, but that actually the star map is where the aliens were telling Betty that they were from because she said, well, where are you from? Let me know where you're from. They showed her a map. And at the time, which was in the late 60s, when people were trying to figure out where this might be, they hadn't even discovered this part of space yet. And this is the Draco. That They were from the Draco constellation, I want to say. Now, Draco is often associated with reptilians, which are associated with negative things. But I don't know that the aliens themselves were necessarily negative. Although I think Betty got upset that they were conducting experiments on them. And I believe they ripped her dress for some reason. So there's so many different details and facts. And if you are interested in UFO lore and mythology, I would really encourage you to just, there's some like, you, there's some YouTube videos of Betty before her passing and Barney passed a while back. So they're both deceased in which she talks about what happened, like, and her story has not changed. And you can also Google the star map and check it out as well. Barney died in 1969. Betty Hill, I believe she's since deceased, has become a popular feature at UFO conventions. One of you got the the you you got Betty and Barney Hill on the nose. Amaze balls. Amaze balls. And a lot of you got timelines correct. You got the hair correct and you got information around the story of this correct as well. Well done. Well done. And finally, number seven. Also saw some of you answering this a little early on, but also right on the dot. Jesus. Jesus. I asked you to try and tap into the consciousness and, and tell me what you feel in your body. Did you do that? What did you feel when you hooked into this consciousness? What kind of colors came up for you as well? Now, I love this particular depiction because I want to say this is in Gethsemane. Gethsemane is the garden that Jesus was in the night before he was crucified. And he prayed, please, Father, take this cup from me. I don't want it. I don't want to do this. Please, if there's any chance, if this can just pass from me, I would so do me a solid, God. But he ultimately said, thy will be done. And the garden of Gethsemane is such a rich metaphor for our own lives when things are hard. I mean, if even Jesus asked for a way out, like it, it makes sense that a lot of us feel the same thing in our own lives. And now some people might be a little bit reactive to Jesus because of his connection to organized religion. And I used to be a little bit, but I've come full circle and I now have a real appreciation for Christ consciousness and the man Jesus. He was the final person in envelope number eight. So how do you guys feel about that exercise? How did you guys do? I know you've left a lot of information in the comments, but did you feel like that exercise, quieting your mind, getting into a neutral space and tapping into what I was sending to you actively and tapping into the energy of these envelopes separately and together, did you feel like that allowed you to perceive these messages coming in? Did you pay attention to how the messages came in? Through imagery, through sounds, through feelings, or through knowing? Did you pay attention to all of that? Because this is your communication system. These are the faculties that spirit will use. And even though you got stuff wrong, and believe me, if I was on the other end of this, I would have gotten the majority of that wrong. And I consider myself to be a pretty accurate intuitive, but I would have gotten a lot of things wrong because that that's the point <laughs> so we're just trying to perfect it we are trying to hone it we are trying to get really clear we're trying to understand oh that's what spirit means when spirit's showing me that and it can take years to figure out what your psychic vocabulary is but if you never start you will never know and if you don't give spirit an opportunity to actually show you or connect with you well then you won't ever develop this kind of relationship that spirit so deeply and so truly wants to have with you did you have fun? Did you like our remote viewing eleganza, extravaganza? 
I did. I had fun. Let me drop down into these comments and see what you're saying. Chandra, can we do this more? Yes, I would love to do this more. And all of the month of July is dedicated to this type of foundational learning, foundational training, connecting us on these various levels to spirit. And so I would love for my teachers and my mods, any of whom might be in this particular post or might watch it afterwards i would love for you guys to like prepare lessons do some psychic games like let's let's practice together we are a community and that's what our goal is is to connect at this higher level and so i would love to do that more absolutely yes heather it was great even though i got a lot wrong but it was a great exercise i like doing these types of things me too kathy sue this just raises my belief in myself and spirit it was a blast yes yes rebecca yes can we do another absolutely I might be able to do it on Tuesday night, but on Wednesday I'm leaving for a week-long vacation, which mommy desperately needs. Okay, can I just tell you something right now? <gasps> mommy desperately needs a vacation. I haven't eaten yet today. Like, I barely have time <laughs> to do anything, so I need to get away. So I'm going to be driving with my handsome husband, Jeremy, up to Des Moines, Iowa from Texas. It's like a 10 or 11 hour drive, but I'm going to be visiting with my brother, Jesse, who I love with the white hot intensity of a thousand suns. He's like my favorite person besides my daughter and my husband. He is the yin to my yang and I want to get him up on line. I want everybody to see him. Hopefully he'll, he'll do that. I just want you guys to check out his energy. Because you guys see me all the time and sometimes I'm goofy and sometimes I'm really in the content and I'm preaching and sometimes I'm a little firm and sometimes I'm really casual. Like you guys know who I am, but it would be really cool for you to check out my brother because his energy is so entirely different. My energy is strong in whatever way it's expressing itself. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty strong. Whereas my brother is like just sunshine, not my dog. But like he's just sunshine and he's just love like he feeds i'm going off about my brother he feeds all of the kids on his block and he's been doing it ever since he's lived there he'll grill all this food and all the kids will come over he'll feed them he's just a giving loving caring wonderful person so i'm gonna go visit him and you know when we hang out with high vibration people it changes our vibration too it modifies it modifies us I, I didn't share this with anybody, but something really terrible happened last week in my life. Something really terrible happened, and it's not sickness, it's not death, it's nothing like that, but it was something that was supposed to happen that did not happen, and it wrecked me. Oh my God, it just leveled me. This was last week, and I've been kind of, I've been in a controlled tailspin about it, because as I always teach you, I try to do myself, I'm looking for the lesson in it, but it's hard, isn't it? When things go totally left or totally wrong, it's hard to stay positive. And man, I have been in the work for this past week. I have been trying to just keep aligning back to the divine, aligning back to the high vibration, while at the same time working so very hard. And it's just been, it's been a trip and, and, and God is teaching me quite a lot but through it, through it, through it, um, there's some really great information and techniques that are being presented to me for my own benefit, but that I get to turn around and present to you. And so you know I'm going to do that. I'm going to help you guys self-correct and get out of these similar types of situations very, very quickly. Because 20 years ago, okay, 30 years ago, had this happened to me, I'd have been wrecked for months about it. I would have had the imprint of the experience on me for months, if not years. Whereas now we're down to days. I'm self-correcting, controlled tailspin. I'm getting myself back online. And I wanna talk about the process of how to do that as opposed to staying in the energy of the event, which is where so many of us get tripped up because it's so terrible what happens. And it's such a disappointment what happens. And we are in the energy of that and we can get stuck there. And some people live their whole lives stuck in a moment like that. Well, not me. No. Okay. No. I am aligning back to high vibration. 
And just as Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, yo, can you take this cup though? Because I don't want it, but thy will be done. I'll do the hard thing if I've got to, thy will be done. That is where I'm at right now. And I'm super thankful for that. Where does Jesse, my brother, come into it? Well, he's high vibration. I get to go to my brother's house and I just get to sit down next to him on the couch and we get to watch Netflix movies and have cocktails and we get to go to restaurants. He hugs me and I just need it. It's just sometimes there are people in our lives that just make us feel so good about ourselves and just help us to reset and to reboot. Isn't that true? Just a hug from them. Just a, just a hug, a kiss on the cheek, and just, oh my God, it's so good to see you. Just being able to spend time, not even talking about anything, but, oh my God, I'm with my brother. I'm with my brother. Oh, I am so looking forward to that. So <laughs> hopefully, Tuesday, I will still be in Texas. We leave bright and early Wednesday morning, but Tuesday, I got to take my dogs to the kennel. I got three Great Danes hauling them around in a Jeep. It's crazy. Plus it's two hours away. So we're going to have an adventure. Then I got to go back to the same doctor I was with today, get my knee injected one more time, one more again, and then I will be back. And if I am back in time is what I'm saying. Before I leave for Jesse in Des Moines, well, absolutely, I'll be back and we can play our games together. We can work our muscles together. We can connect with one another. I love each and every one of you, wherever you are on the planet. I hope you're having a beautiful day, a beautiful night, and know that it's not just me that loves you, or Ku that loves you, but God loves you. You are loved.